Becoming a pro debugger is crucial for productivity and your sanity. This is simple stuff, but you'll love me a long time once this video is done. Okay, so I've got a scene here and I've got these two objects with scripts on them. Uh, and there are errors in the code. So let's have a look at the first script, shapes. So all this is meant to be doing is taking a shape, it will iterate uh, for as many times as our shape count is set, and it will just spawn the shape, and then it will add it to this shape list here. So let's see what happens when we press play. The variable shape prefab of shapes has not been assigned. Now, I'm sure you have seen this a billion times, uh, but basically all this ever means in Unity is that you have not filled one of your uh, variables in your scripts in the editor. So we can easily fix that by just sliding that in right there. Cool. Let's press play and see what happens now. All right, null reference exception. Okay, so this would be the most common error uh, that Unity devs receive. And to be honest, uh, it might even be the most common error that uh, devs in general receive. So let's see how to fix this. And by the way, while we're here, this is not just read only. You can double click this and it will take you directly to the offending line. Okay, so it is telling us that something in this function is uh, null it's, and it's throwing an exception. So what you could do is go in here maybe and debug log, you know, uh, let's debug log the shape, see if the shape is null or, or whatever. But let's try not be noobs for a second. Let's remove this and do it the proper way. So we know that something in this function is throwing an error. So what we can do is create a breakpoint on the first line of this function. Now I'm using Visual Studio, but it is exactly the same in VS Code and Writer. The only difference is maybe the hotkeys might be a, bit, a little bit different in Writer, but functionally it, it works exactly the same. So now that we've got this breakpoint here, what this is going to do is Unity is going to execute this code until it hits our breakpoint and then it's going to stop and let us ins inspect stuff. Okay, so to begin debugging, we just press this button up here, attach to Unity. If you don't have this, it probably means that you have not installed the uh, tools for Visual Studio for Unity. So go to the uh, Unity Hub and just uh, add that module. So press the uh, button here or just press F5 and that will start uh, in debug mode. Now back in Unity, let's clear this. If we press play now, it will now execute our code and stop at our breakpoint. Cool little bananas. So now when we're in debug mode, we can actually hover over here and we can see the actual variable uh, settings. We can see what they're set to. So we can see now we actually have a prefab set to this shape prefab. We can see that our shape count is set to three. Cool. So what could be null here? What's throwing this exception? Is it our shape? No, shape seems to be good. Is it our shape list? Yes, it's null. We have not initialized our shape list anywhere. So let's fix that. Let's do it up here before we start actually setting stuff. Let's say our shape list is equal to new list game object. Cool. So with our breakpoint still selected, uh, let's attach to Unity again and let's clear this and then try again. So now if we inspect it, we'll see that it has indeed been initialized and it's got a count of zero. Now that we have fixed our bug, what if you want to continue stepping through the code to inspect what goes on? You can come up to here and press this little button here, step over. Alternatively, you can press F10. Now I highly recommend learning these hotkeys as there are only a handful of these debugging hotkeys, but they make your life so much easier. So let's press F10. And as you can see, it goes to the next line and it's indicated by this arrow here. Now, if we hover over shape list, we'll see that one shape has been added to our shape list. And we can actually click this and inspect our list. We can see at index zero here, we've got this shape that was just added. So let's remove this uh, breakpoint here. And as we're at the end of this function here, if I press F10, it will actually break out of this function and it will go back up to our loop. And as you can see, our I is set to zero, but if we jump into this loop now, it will now be one. Cool, so that's how you step through code. One little caveat is that pressing F10 uh, will not actually step into a function. So I'll demonstrate that by just going, pressing F10, going down to this line here, which is the function call here. If I press F10 again, 
it will not actually show us what has happened there, it will just execute it and then send us next to the next line. If you want to actually jump into the function or step into the function, you can come up here and press this button here, step into. Alternatively, you can press F11 and it will jump into that function now. Now, it will happen uh, very often that when you're debugging your code or God forbid somebody else's code, uh, you will accidentally jump into a function that could be like a thousand lines long uh, and you know that function works and you know the error is not there and you just want to get the hell out. You don't want to press F10 a million times. Uh, so what you can do is you can come up here and press this button, step out or press shift 11 and that will step us out of this function and it will uh, allow us to continue the execution here. Cool. So I'm done now. I know that this script is working. Um, so uh, I've, uh, I've unticked all my breakpoints and now I'll just click continue and that will just continue the execution like normal. And as you can see, we have now fixed our um, script and it's spawning three cubes. Excellent. So that's one out of two. One out of two. So let's disable that and let's now enable our numbers script. Cool. So let's have a look what numbers script is doing. Well, we're creating a new variable here called num and we're setting it to start number, whatever this start number is set into in the editor. We're iterating for as many as iterations is and we're multiplying our number by the multiplier and then we're coming down here and we're dividing by our, by our divider and then we're printing the final result. So let's see what happens if we press play. Infinity, uh-huh. Well, that doesn't seem right. So let's set a breakpoint and have a little looksies. Press play. All right, so num will be zero, but after we press F10, we'll say that it will be set to three because that's what start number is set to. We've got iterations here for three and we'll say num is three, multiplier is five. If we step down, it's now been multiplied. Multiplied again, multiplied again, and that's three iterations. So on the next one, it will go out. And now let me show you a magic trick, all right? This will blow your tits off. So we're down here, right? We have just uh, executed our code uh, as we've written it, but Visual Studio allows you to actually grab this breakpoint here and pull it up. And we're basically saying, could you please run this section of code again? It's not reversing time because if you inspect our num here, it's actually the, the multiplied version of our number. So we're actually controlling the flow of, of this code here. So this is super handy that if you're stepping through stuff, you may have missed something. Uh, so you, you can pull it back up and try it again. Um, also, you can actually change variables on the fly. Look at this. So I've, I'm hovering over num here. I can actually change this. Let's make this 150. So we've actually changed this uh, at runtime amazing way to uh, try different edge cases and not actually set the game up so that these variables will be these uh, perfect things for the edge case. You can actually just change them directly in the editor. So let's go down here again. This will be three iterations. Cool. Now down here, our number is getting pretty big and our divider is zero. And if you know anything about dividing by zero, you'll know bad things happen. And that would explain why our number is coming out as infinity. We know now that our divider, so obviously this was a very uh, obvious thing, uh, but uh, when you're writing your game algorithms and stuff, uh, this will be an invaluable tool in your tool set and it will save you many, many tears, many man tears. So if we press play now, we will see that it does indeed give us a correct answer. Excellent. So if you learned something or if you like the video, leave a freaking like boys, like the video and uh, subscribe as well because I'll be releasing more of this juicy content and uh, I'll see you next time. See ya.